July 29th, Dallas, Texas, Saturday night. It's going down the night before the big three. Me and G Moody and very special guests. It's going to be fantastic. Tickets are available at iamrappaporttour.com. I hope to see you at the show. And then I hope to see you the next day at the big three in Dallas. Rock your soft ass t-shirts. Tickets are available at iamrappaporttour.com. Me, Jim Brewer, Rob Gronkowski, Trey Wingo, Matthew Berry, FantasySportsFest.com. Tickets are available now. You save $10. Use the promo code DINGO. The promo code is DINGO. Save $10 off your tickets. It's going to be a fantastic day at Gillette Stadium, August 20th. We're going to get busy. We're going to do mock drafts. We're going to do draft drafts. We're going to do duress mock drafts. And we're doing a dope-ass live podcast with Gronk, Trey Wingo, and ESPN's Matthew Berry. Michael. Jimmy, where you at? I'm in my in my bathroom in New Jersey, hiding from what? everyone. Whoa, 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 what are you doing in the bathroom? It's the only place I can speak without being interrupted. Yeah, you know, uh, how, how do you feel about that as a parent? The interruptions, the aggravations, the questions, uh, you know, the, the pulling at the coattails, the sort of bandwagoning with, with, with you. Like, you, you're a father, but, like, you want to look, you want the answer? Encyclopedia Britannica still exists. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Google it, stupid. Google it. What are you asking me for? Google it. You, you, you don't even need to open a book. Just Google it. No. All we are, all we are is we're Ubers. We're a bank. We're the bank. But we don't get anything back. We're no. just loners. We're loners. We're, but... You know what? I will say this. It's if I didn't have family, I'd be dead. If I didn't, have, if I didn't take the responsibility of being a father, I would definitely be dead. I'd be right. wandering. I'd be wandering aimlessly in the streets. No, like I you, hear you. You know what I mean? I mean, it's uh, we moan, we bitch, complain. I make fun of it, but at the end of the day, I wouldn't trade it for the world. Wouldn't trade it for the world. But no. The reality is, yeah, I got to stand in my bathroom or in my garage in places where they don't want to go. Right. Right. The, 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 lesser, the lesser of evils. Yes. And, and the younger they are, the more of a pain in the ass they are with interrupting. They, they'll stick their fingers underneath the, the bathroom door. They'll do, Daddy, I'm on the phone. Daddy, I need you. They don't need you. They just don't, they want 100% of your attention just because. No rhyme or reason, they just want it. All right, now listen to me, Jim. Yeah. Me and you are going to be at Gillette Stadium August 20th, okay? We're going to be doing it. It's going to be happening. The Fantasy Sports Festival. Yes. You're a New Yorker. I'm a New Yorker. We've never talked football We've talked Raging Bull endlessly. Yep. I don't want to get diverted by doing Raging Bull. You fuck my wife. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you again, did you or did you not? I'm not going to get diverted with that. All right. I'm not going to answer you, though, because that's a sick question. You're a sick fuck, and I ain't that sick not to answer you. You should worry about your weight, you fat fuck. You want problems upstairs, you fucking take it out of me. Now you're answering all the questions, Joey, but you're not answering the right one. Did you or did you not? I just told you, I'm not going to fucking answer you. I'm not going to fucking answer you, sick fuck. You're fucking sick, you know that, right? You fucking, you, you, something wrong with you. There's something wrong with you. Let's stay focused. We're not going to talk about Jake, who, who just turned 96. We're Jeez. not going to talk about Jake. Jesus. How, uh, what, what is your team, Mike? What is I'm your Giants. Team? I'm Giants. Okay. Now, Giants got me with Lawrence Taylor. But... Before the Giants, I will admit, in my heart, I'm like the governor of New Jersey. I am diehard Mets in baseball, and I'm a Cowboys fan. What the fuck are you talking about? That's right. You heard me. I'll say it again. I'm a Cowboys fan. However, however, football is the only sport where whatever New York team is winning, I will watch them. So I... But in my heart of hearts, when it comes down to it, 
I oh, my heart still. I, I saw it this year with the Cowboys. I thought I left them. I thought I was gone from them and just Giants. But the the better the Cowboys got this year, the because I couldn't. I can't stand Romo. I. I Nice guy, I'm sure, but he's... Ah, he's, whatever. You know what? We don't have to say. We always got to preface it about Romo for some reason. Nice guy. Listen, <laughs> I can't stand him either. I'm sure. Nice guy, all these yeah. things. He didn't get it done. No, he, he didn't, didn't get Danny it White. fucking done. He's Danny White. He's Danny White. Yep. He's closed. You know what pisses me off? The only Cowboy fans know this. I have to live with that highlight reel of of Montana throwing the game-winning touchdown to, uh, what was it? Dwight Clark. Yes. Now, that is not what won the game. That is not what won that game. What Only, won the game? I will tell you what won the game. The Cowboys still had a minute change to march down the field. And march, they did. The first, the first snap, Danny White threw... 20 sub yards to Drew Pearson. Bang! He gets it. Now they're at they're one more pass, Hollywood Henderson. Bang! Uh -huh. One one more throw, and they're in field goal range, and they're winning the game with over 35 seconds left. And Danny White fumbles the snap. I uh, you know what? I uh, this is a, a great refresher. Because as much as I love football, I've totally forgotten this gorgeous, very specific, very detailed play-by-play. -play. Fumbled the snap. Who fumbles a snap? Danny White does. Tony Romo. Yep. Running into the end zone. No one's even tackling him. Fumbles the ball. He wasn't even hit. Blew the game. That's when I knew they're never going to win with this guy. He's Danny but, White. He's now, Danny but, White. Now, let me ask you a question. What? Why did you preface it by saying, I'll bet you he's a nice guy? Because I feel like if people talk shit about me, they're not like, yeah, Michael Rappaport. You know, I bet you he's a nice guy, but I think they just annihilate me. Well, what, what is it about Tony Romo that everybody has to preface it? I bet you he's a Do we feel bad for him? No, no. Here's what it is. Well, some people do. But at the end of the day, if someone trashes your acting, the trash in your acting, if they – Jim – like, for instance, um, I, I think it was uh, Rolling Stone magazine. You know, they had, like, the, the, the all-time cast in order. And who was – Saturday Night Live. Yeah, whatever jerk-off did this, he, was a, he, he wasn't even a reporter. His take on me, which – I'm okay. You call me what you want, but just say I either suck or can't act or not funny. His take was Jim Brewer. Every time you saw him, you just went, oh, that asshole again. I'm like, oh, this. Oh. so who, we, who, who's this guy? Do you know his name? Be honest. No, I don't know his name, but I, gonna, I almost, I look almost try to find it up. out. I wanted to find him, and I Let wanted. Let me find out his fucking name. We're gonna track him down because that list was a few years ago. Yes. And these fucking guys with their fucking nerd lists and yeah. their comedy nerds, yeah. and now they got sports nerds. Yeah. They could go eat two dicks. Yeah. Okay. They could eat three if they want. Eat I three mean, fucking dicks, out. you fucking nerd. <laughs> but here's my thing: if you like Tony. I don't, this fuck guy, he's the blah, blah, blah. I'm sure he's a nice guy. But at the end of the day, he's a football player and a Cowboy fan. No, you're not for me. So I don't want to, I don't want to call him this and that. He's a, this. He can't get it. He's not the guy. He's not my Cowboy. Now, we can go uh, and, uh, so at the, here, I'll give you, for instance, with baseball right now. And I'm going to ruffle a lot of feathers. Yeah, break it down. Get into your baseball shit. Listen. What pisses me off about baseball is I'm a diehard, vicious baseball fan. And if baseball was serious, that oh, we want to get rid of steroids. They're so full of nitrogenous waste. If you want to get rid of steroids, you go, all right, boys, line them up. It's the weekly piss test. They don't right. do that. 
So they pretend it's clean. Meanwhile, you got a guy from the Yankees who has 30 home runs because he's a big, oh, he's six foot eight, and me, big man, and he talks nice, and he knows what to say to press, and we build. He, there's no human way possible that he has not pissed in a cup in front of someone. There's no way. He's doing something. This, you cocksucker. Fuck you. You Mets fan fuck you. cocksucker. Look at his head. Look at How his head. How fucking dare you? I said it. And I'll say it with a bunch of other ball players too. They are not. And they're all saying the same thing. Oh, the ball is wrapped tightly this year. Oh, the lights are all set differently. We can't explain why people are throwing 100 miles an hour and hitting 40 home runs. The last time this happened, ah, steroid era. But these wow. guys are different because they're muscular. They're so full of shit, it pisses me off. It bothers me. If you're going to so, legalize it, legalize so it. So inevitably, you're saying that the new home run king is on juice. Just, I want, I'm asking you a head-on question. Inevitably, this is what you're saying, that the new home run king he's on is, on, is on that Sammy Sosa. 100% he's on something. You cannot convince me he's not on something. Don't give me this bullshit. He's a big man. So is a million other ball players. That doesn't mean the guy was going to be cut. He almost didn't make the team. And now all of a sudden, he's the greatest hitter in history? Right. And, and, and he, you're not even a month into baseball, and the most powerful organization in the world built him a big judge thing in the back? Everybody knows you got to give a ball player at least two months before they calm down. The league pitches him out. This is, this is the era that, that – that, Error all over. They just found a new way to cover up the bullshit. Wow. All right. All right. Now, now, now. I'm not a big baseball guy. Yeah. But like the most, like the rest of the world, especially the sports world and the comedy world and the Jim Brewer fans. Sure. When the Mets made it to the World Series in 2015, yes. You turned post game Facebook Live videos into must see TV. It was crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, how did that start? How crazy did that get? How big did it get? And like, did you ever imagine that those Facebook videos would be seen, you know, uh -huh. by so many people? No, I had no clue. Here's how it really started. Here's the raw truth. Now, I come from the old school. I've been doing stand up a long time, so I come from the era of behind social media. So my a guy I was working with was like, Jim, you have to tweet every day so i'm not going to do that well you have to make facebook videos every day so i'm not I, i'm not that clever because you don't have to be clever i said it's exhausting to wake up i got three kids i'm wiping my father's ass he's almost 90 uh i'm taking care of my mom i ain't get time to make everyone i'll do it on stage jim jim i'm telling you uh you don't even have to be funny just be relatable your fans love you Fine, I'll try it. I made a couple of videos, Mike. You know, like, oh, here's my daughter, and she's pissing off my wife, and ah. she's not cleaning her room. Um, and it would get like, you know, 15,000 people. Like, oh, okay. Then I'd make another video, and I, I'd make little videos here and there. And this is in February. March hits. I go on vacation, I make a couple more videos. April comes. Now, my wife's going through cancer at the time, her second round, second round Shit. of cancer. She's taking an ass whooping with the chemo, and it's chemo day, and she comes home, and she's got no energy. She just, everyone's seen someone going through this. And um, I'm watching the opening day of the Mets against the Nationals, and the Nationals just signed one of the best pitchers in baseball. And they're going to win the World Series. Case closed. And the Mets signed big, sexy, 400-pound, silverback Bartolo Colon. Ha -ha. The Mets, are they have no hits going into the seventh inning. It's a no-hitter. And Colon's going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. He's only giving up two hits. Long story short, 
We're going into the ninth. The Mets got a hit. They took the lead. And Bartolo is going to out-pitch Max Scherzer. And I'm doing what I do. I watch the game like it's the seventh game of the World Series. And I'm, I'm jumping. I'm bugging out. I'm yelling out, oh, big man, Max Scherzer with $300 million. You can't beat Bartolo Colon in the Mets. And I turn around, and my wife, no hair, no energy, gray from being injected with toxins. What is, what is so funny? What are, you, what are you laughing at? I swear to God, Mike, I get goosebumps thinking about it. She goes, this is what you should be making videos of. Ah. And, and she goes, and don't, don't even think about it. Just do them the way you feel it and your fans will love it. They'll love it. And I just went, Oh my God, that's freaking brilliant. And, and then she said, well, you need to do every game. And I said, every game, are you, are you out of your mind? She went, trust me, do every game. And I started doing every game. And I had no clue. The Mets started off, I think, two and zero, and then they lost three in a row. So they went, they went two and three, and then they won eleven straight. And by the eleventh straight victory, I was on ESPN, MLB. That's crazy. So I already had followers, and they followed me throughout the season. So every night I would get at least thirty depending on the team, to 150,000 viewers. But then as it went closer to the playoffs, it got bigger. And then we were in the million zone Wow! once, once the playoffs. And, and the coolest thing was Howard Stern's producer, um, Gary, one day. Wait, wait, you mean goes, fucking Baba Booey? No, dude, check this out. He goes, he sees me and he goes, Brewer, Brewer, can I be in your video tonight? We're at the World Series. I went, you you really want to be? He's like, I have to be in your recap tonight. I went, uh, okay. And it was the only game that the Mets actually won in the World Series, and Baba Bowie's in it. Uh, but that's when I thought, like, damn, you like people are what people know about this thing. This is insane. And when I would walk through the stadium, right, at, at kids. Everyone that weren't even Jim Brewer fans or even know who I was were walking by going, oh, my God, it's the Mets video guy. That's crazy. And and that led to people buying tickets. Like I, now when I play theaters in New York, I'm sold out. Holy and it's, shit. you know, they check out YouTube channel. Oh, shit. He's a comedian. I didn't even know he was a comedian. Oh, my God. It's the guy from Half Baked. I love that movie. Oh my God, he's playing here. Let's get tickets. And there's, I started playing South Carolina. Uh, I play all over the country. And it's weird when you're in South Carolina, Iowa, uh, the Dakotas, and you got people out there with Mets shirts on. And they're like, we watch you every game, bro. Like every game? Every game. Love it. Wow. And that's the thing, people, I still do it. I still do it. Do you, do you love doing it? Like, cause, cause for me, like, you know, there's this sort of irreverent sports media, sports yeah. culture, these sports voices and you, you being one of the sort of breakthrough ones, you know, yeah. and obviously it, it's not something, you know, it just sort of happened organically, but I yeah. imagine you must love doing it because you were watching the games and talking shit about the games and the thrill of yes. victory and the agony of defeat yes. was something you were yes. doing your entire life, right? Yes, my whole life. Now, the, the only thing I'd like to do a little bit more is like what I started off the conversation with you, which is get brutally honest. Like I, I don't – I'm tired of, of, of all the sports analysis and all those guys. Like just say what's really going on. They can't. You know, there's just – they're not allowed to because they're paid by corporations. So I get that. Like for instance, you know, there's a Met. You put him in rehab. Just, just, just say he's got problems in rehab. Don't, don't tell me his girlfriend broke up and then he's and then he's on the panel. He's fifty pounds lighter and he's going. I like to apologize to my team, and I'm really sorry for everything I did. Uh -huh. Dude, 
Dude, he needs rehab. Right. He's, a, he's a mess. He's a mess. Get, protect him, but just, you know, oh, it must be his arm. It's not his arm. It's his addiction. Do something for this guy. Someone save his life. Right. Will you? Um, that, that's what I'm waiting for. They're all so f- – I, I, whatever. That, that, that's what I'm waiting for. And I actually – started you know with the i'd like to create a whole system for that where it's just like hey we're gonna say it like it is yeah with the sports yes because because in my opinion it's like like, you know when you're at home watching the game you 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 got your finger up your ass you know some people got a beer some people are drinking a fucking uh (laughs) soda some people are you know and then we're sitting there and they're all great it's not that they're not all great all the broadcasters all the analysts they're all great yes yes you know i'm sitting there with a pair of shorts on, uh, particularly like fantasy football. Like I'm sitting yes. there sometimes nude going right. fucking crazy watching these games with <laughs> basketball, right. same thing. And I'm listening to a guy in a suit talk to me in a very sterile way at times. Oh. And, and, and I think that because of the internet, because like the Facebook Live and the social media and the tweeting and all that stuff, there needs to be something, you know, you, people are responding to that you know, sort of more tangible, realistic, I am losing my fucking mind because my team sucks or fuck you, LeBron, yes. or, yes. you know, yeah. you know, wh- wh- whatever it might be. You know what I mean? And I think people... Well, are- you know, it is, you know, it is, it's the more we become uh, social brats, corporate speak like this, news shoved down your throat today, more horror and tragedy when this world... Well, th- 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 they're robots. Everything's becoming a robot. So it's refreshing to like you. You see a guy. You see a guy get a touchdown. Would you rather see the guy catch the ball, touch, and then they talk to him after, and they go, "Well, you know, I'm just uh, I was hoping, and I, I and you know, my speed. Thank God when I co- I want him to go. This this punk ass. He thought." He, all game, he thought he had me. He thought he had me. But I, I, I cut to the right. He fell for it. He fell for the cut to the right. I beat his ass downtown. I left him in the next city, and we beat their asses. Right. I, I will throw a chair to watch that. I, I want to see the emotion, but unfortunately – Money calms all that down. You make money. Hey, listen, we're paying you a salary here, John. You wear a suit and tie every time you speak. You're representing us. They're ball players. Let's get back to passion and the way we feel. I agree. I agree. I mean, the, the whole thing with the football last year with the celebrations, it's like if you fucking Stupid. run 90 yards and you catch you know, a pass and you're running for your dear life and you, you get into the, to the end zone, you should be able to do whatever the fuck you want. First of all, you, you're alive. Second of all, it's like everybody does that. I mean, to be able to pull off like unbelievable shit like Antonio Brown does, if he wants to twerk, if he wants yes. to fuck, like he should be able to do whatever the fuck he wants. That's right. When you start as a child, as a teenager, when you're playing with your boys, if you're playing with the boys, the men, the whatever, and you're on this and you get that play, you you're relentless for the next 45 minutes. Yep. It's just that is what makes sports amazing. When when a baseball player hits that big bomb, I I want him to throw the bat. Throw the bat and stare at the pitcher going, you really, really thought you were getting that ball past me? Then I want it. I want it. Now, some people don't like that. That's fine. That's their problem. That's why you get – that's why, you know, maybe a push and a shove, a ball thrown at you. Look, that's that's what sports is. Right. It's competitiveness. It's passion. The thrill of victory and the agony of defeat. That That's it. That's what it was. That's why that tagline was so good for the ABCY World of Sports. And that's right. why we, we responded to it every single time that poor fucking skier came <laughs> off that jump right. on the ABC thing. Now, right. as far as fantasy football... Cause, cause we're not yes. doing a full podcast today because no. we're, we're doing it on the phone, but we're going to be fucking face to face August 20th in Gillette. Now Fancy. I have personal feelings about the New England Patriots. I have personal I feelings about Gronk. I respect all of them. 
How could Me you too. not respect them? I don't try to say I don't respect them. I don't try to say to discredit them. But I'm a Giants yeah. fan. I'm a yep. Jets fan. And, yep. you know, I have my feelings. But I can't wait to be on the field, to be doing Neither. the Fantasy Sports Festival August 20th. We're going to be up there. Now, yep. I, let me tell you something. Up until last season, my son and his friend were controlling my team. And then because of the Stern uh, the Stern show, that was my league. That's still my yeah. number one league with Gorilla, Gary, Delabonte, right. and then the right. rest of them. And and they they took my kids out of the out of the thing and, and they bullied them. They muscled two thirteen year olds really? out of the league. And what they what? did, they they created a fantasy football monster. Now I'm mm. a monster. And now I make yes. all decisions on my own, all executive decisions on my own. And 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 for me, I don't play high stakes fantasy. Okay. Yes. I play for, yes. for high emotional stakes. So I'm not playing for the money. I want you to feel like I'm violating you. I want you to feel like, <laughs> like, I'm, uh, like I'm inside you. You know, close, nice, tenderly, but gets a little rough. You know what I'm saying? I know what you're saying. This is what I. This is another thing that I felt where my weakness comes from. I feel when and and I hope you can show me some of this. When, and I feel where my weakness is. I have to start watching the college so I know who's coming up and who's the guy that who's going to be perfect for my team yes. and this team. And so it's not just, Oh, it's, it's, uh, it's just the NFL. You got to start with the college guys and you get, you need a n lot of knowledge. And if you can, you can show me that if, it, if I can start getting, because I'm, I, I'd love to start getting passionate about that. And I'd love to be able to bust your chops. Cause oh. I know once I'm in it, a lot of people gonna have problems. Oh yeah, no, it's 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 so much fun. Now now you know that Rob Gronkowski is gonna be yes. there with us is on the twentieth. Gronk is gonna be there. Have you ever met Gronkowski? No, but I, I already love him. Me too. Love him. I can't get enough of him <clears throat> in the public. I can't in, see that's another guy. Passion. I don't care what I'm doing off stage. Worry about what I do on the field. I like having a good time off and that's I love him. Oh, yeah, if you're if you're if you're a Super Bowl winning six foot eight, two hundred and eighty pound tight end, you should be right. banging every single thing in your path. And I don't understand why it's even a question that he's doing that. He's not even close to being Tom Brady in terms of the political correctness. He's a fucking right. savage. And I all I want to see him do is be a savage. And 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 I don't know why people uh they they, they question it. Now, there is a racial thing because when he's doing it, it's fun. He's just being a fun-loving guy. And then, you know, when yeah. you see black athletes, they're saying this and that. But specifically with Gronkowski, as much as I can't stand New England. The Patriots, yes. You can't not love and appreciate the, the toughness, the grit, and the passion, I, and the fun that he still continues to play with. I agree. I agree. I'm a full-blown fan. You don't have to sell me on him whatsoever. That is a guy that gets the job done. He plays hard on the field, and he plays hard off the field, as well as he should for a man that age and for what he's accomplished. All right, so before before I see you August 20th at Foxborough, what are you up to yes. the rest of the summer? Are you making another record? How, how, how successful was the heavy metal record? It was all right. Didn't do good, but what sales-wise didn't do great. However... What I really wanted from it, and tomorrow's my big night, um, I want it to be a one-man show from my garage with an alter ego of, of a – so I go through the, all the big moments of my life on stage, off stage, oh, on shit. camera, off camera, and it's paralleled with a song uh -huh. that goes on the side in the fantasy world. So it's me talking in a garage. And then it looks like you're at a rock uh, arena and back to talking in the garage and I'm back in arena. And that's going down in New York City oh, at shit. the cutting room. And um, I have some really good, important people coming down to check it out who I wanted from the beginning. But besides that, I'm torn. I want to get my Netflix special and I got a tight hour. I'm off to California uh, Thursday and I'll be in California all of next week in Seattle the whole west coast and uh it's all torn man where, where, where can where can people get tickets well let's see what is there ox no you go to officialjimbrewer.com official 
jimbrewer.com. So, so uh, what do you think about the Netflix? I'm going to let you go because I, I know we got, you know, we're, we're on the phone. My voice is all fucked yeah. up. What, what do you think about comedy in terms of the, the Netflix specials? They're paying people incredible amounts of monies. You know, I think there's pros and cons because in the 80s, it was sort of like the disco era yeah. of comedy. Yep. It, it, mm-hmm. it blew the roof off and then it sort of, you know, the 90s trickled in and then it dipped down and now we're back at a high, which I think is great. But as a guy who's been doing it for so long, you know, and you've been, you know, you know, at the top, you've been at the middle, you've been at the, what the fuck is he up to? You've been at, you know, you're always respected. What do you think of like, when you say you want to do your Netflix special, like in my opinion, it's like, you should be able to do your Netflix special whenever you want. I see some of them are fucking incredible. I've, I've been exposed to a whole bunch of new comedians and then some of them I'm like, eh. I mean, so what is your opinion on uh, about that as 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 an actual participant of it? Well, for me, where I'm at, no matter where I'm at, I, I never expect anything. Do I feel that I should be on there? Hell yes, and I know I'm going to be very successful. Um, as a matter of fact, I had a special on there, and I had a deal for another one, and, went, and it was through this company called Epics. So I went with Epics. And then the deal was go from Epics to Netflix. Now my first special went on there, had tremendous tracking. And it was right before this whole big blow up of Netflix. And it sold a lot of tickets and created a lot of popularity for me. However, when the second one was about to come out, Epics had a falling out with Netflix Ah. and Netflix pulled all their specials. So now my mission is, well, Forget everyone. I just want to go to just go right to Netflix and go, look, I'm not looking. I'm not even looking for money. I shouldn't even say that. Just here's the special air this and it'll be extremely profitable for me because once eyes or the more eyes hit me, the better it always I always prosper from it. And and I got to thank guys like today or Howard Stern or so many people were turned on to me through Howard and I keep that product going. They come see me three, four, five, six times. Um, and the Met videos. Now they discover me through that. Now they've seen me to, I had no clue you do stand up, and this is my third time seeing you. That's and you crazy. got a new hour. So Netflix is extremely important right now for guys like me. All right, Jim. Well, listen, I'm going to see you the 20th. I'll talk to you before that. I can't wait to I'll be see you there. It's going to be fucking awesome at Gillette Stadium. I can't wait to be up there. It's going to be me, you, Gronkowski, Trey Wingo, Mr. Fantasy Football himself, my man, Matthew Berry. And it's going to be awesome at Gillette Stadium. I can't wait. I can't either. Thanks for asking me to be part of it. Of course, man. And I'll see you soon and I'll talk to you soon. Take care, brother. Bye. Bye.